texting? Who sucks at testing? What do you hate about texting? Let's dive into this. Um, so let's, I, I was going to put something up in the beginning, but I actually did the whole thing and then I got booted off. I had to start all over, all over again and I wanted to be here for you for eight o'clock because I don't like to be late. I like to make sure that I am here in service to you, my loves. So let's talk about texting. I'm going to give a little bit of time for our latecomers to come in. Um, but who do we have here? What is your question about texting? Uh, so I'm doing this from my laptop and I don't quite see things the way that I normally do um, if I was doing it from my cell phone. So I don't know who's on, but say hello. Um, give a little shout out. Uh, say what you're here for. Like, what is your question? What is it that you want to know about texting? What is it that bothers you? Uh, I put this out today and somebody said bad grammar really, you know, and I'll tell you like one of my pet peeves is when people put a U instead of a Y O U because I'm a literary person and it's like a word is a word is a word. A word is not a letter in my mind. Um, and then also like I help people figure out what to say via text. Um, how to not be overreactive when they get text messages because it's so hard to read tone when it comes to texting and that can be really difficult for people because if we put our own insecurities like if we're like I call them goggles right like we tend to see things from our perspective and so the goggles that you have on sometimes can skew things in a negative way and somebody can be actually being really kind or being very open but if we're looking at it the wrong way then we don't see it that way um so you know are, are you looking at a text right now is there something that somebody wrote to you and you're wondering how to read it let's talk about this and I want to see if the chat is working. So if somebody can send a hi or a hello, hello, I'm going to do it myself just so that I can see that the chat is working for you guys. Say hello. Let me see you pop up. Stephanie, there we go. Hi, Stephanie. All right. I'm seeing you guys come up. This is super fun. I love it. Love it. There's always seems to be hi, lovely. Um, always seems to be some kind of like a little bit of a delay. I really wish that I was plugged in. Hi, Nina. Oh, so good to see you, ladies. Um, really wish that, that I just had like a super, super high speed internet, which I think I'm doing better here. Carolyn, hi. Hello, darling. Uh, let's talk about texting. Let's get a question. I, you know, guys, I keep saying I'm a magic eight ball. Like, just shake me up and unleash me get me talking get me chatting with you get me answering your question because that is really where I thrive it's it really is my strength to be in a conversation with people of course I can be the talking head all day long I can just bring a subject and just give you information but I love talking with you not just at you it is always like super super my pleasure to to just dive into this stuff and, and dive into what it is that specifically is on your radar. Um, okay, so I'm just finding some getting text messages about texting. Um, so <laughs> this is fun. Uh, so let me see. One of the things that, that I actually tend to help people do is bridge the gap from texting to seeing somebody in person. So, um, and, and I want to advise you guys, I want to warn you against like texting for weeks and months on end, because here's what happens when we meet somebody online and they seem really great on paper and we're like, oh, this is good. And we start building that castle in the sky and then we go from online to texting. Here's my number. We're not even talking on the phone. And, and we have this text exchange with somebody who seems super great. And now we're building them up some more in our head. And, and we narrow in our focus to this one person. And even if we haven't kissed them and we haven't seen them, we're starting to, to eliminate 
other people. Maybe you don't go back online and, and go look if there's someone else you're interested in. And I don't want you to do that. I don't want you to be stuck texting with somebody and feeling things for them if you haven't met them or least of all even talk to them on the phone and don't just talk to them on the phone guys FaceTime with them get on a video chat um, there's something really exciting that I'm gonna be doing and I'm, I'm doing a soft launch on November 9th and I'm selecting a few people to be a part of this because I'm only gonna have five on each side but a lot of you are aware of my speed dating events and there's one coming up this Saturday we're starting to book for November I even have names already for December which is super cool um, and and so what we're doing is we're taking online dating and we're taking physical speed dating and we're making them have a baby and I'm going to be hosting online speed dating. So it's exactly the same thing as if you came to one of my speed dating events, but it's online. So you're going to sit across from somebody. It's going to be a video chat, and, and you're going to have five minutes or so, depending on how many people. I might make it three. I might make it five. I'm going to play with that a little bit. And you're going to have a conversation the same. I'm going to give you helper questions, just as if you came to my speeding, speed dating event. And I'm going to help you have a conversation. And then, whoop, you know, on to the next person. So it's going to be a lot of fun. If you can't make it out to a physical event, this is going to be coming up for you. It's going to be an app. It's going to be so cool. I'm super excited by this. But I just don't want you to have imaginary relationships with people. And that's the danger of texting without seeing somebody. And I see Stephanie saying, I'm stuck in that exactly right now. So Stephanie, talk to us. Just stop texting. <laughs> like, Did you get tired of it? Like, Tell us a little bit about the backstory about that. Um, and oh, I wish I, I'd love it if I could bring you guys on to chat with me, but I'm not seeing that option. I think that would be super fun. But so Stephanie says she's stuck in that exactly right now. So if I'm if I'm assuming correctly, met somebody online, seen good on paper, you exchange phone numbers, now you're texting back and forth with each other, or maybe you're just messaging online with each other, and you say. And, and you need to say this, right? You need to take it from online to in person. Somebody has to do it, right? Somebody has to bridge the physical distance. You know, whenever somebody says, what do you think about long distance relationships? I say, somebody has to move. Because eventually if you're, you know, for most people, right? And there are some people who really like their solitude and for them, long distance relationships work because they have a sense of companionship while keeping their solitude and that's fine but for people who actually want a relationship with somebody close by and a physical presence then bridge that gap as soon as you can so they seem good on paper when you meet them online you take it to a chat have a little bit of back and forth but then take it to a video chat or get a face-to-face -face meeting don't rely on believing what it is that they say about themselves. I want you to be detectives because again, this whole point is making sure the next one you kiss is the right one, which means not wasting time and holding space open beside you for that right person, which means don't get caught up with somebody over text and close that space down for somebody that you haven't met and hasn't given you an opportunity to vet. Now, some of you have read No More Assholes. You know what I'm talking about when I talk about the two-stage vetting process. First, for mindset, selfish short-term thinker versus generous long-term thinker. And then next, for compatibility. But you won't get a chance to vet if you're not meeting up with them. So you meet somebody, you're messaging, get that face-to-face -face meeting as soon as possible. If they can't meet you in person because they're too busy, get a video chat going. If they refuse to do that, bye bye because the sign is clear. They are not in this for a relationship. Somebody who's in this for a relationship who thinks you are hopefully awesome, as, as great as you think they are at that point, uh, they will be eager to get a face-to-face -face with you. They won't be afraid to do that. So anybody who's afraid to go to go to go to go face to face uh, call them out on that and shut it down if they refuse to see you shut it down it's not worth it it's not worth your time it's not worth your energy uh, Nina says last you guys I talked to two months ago this exactly happened to me 
I actually I absolutely agree with no texting for too long. Good, 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 good. Uh, we we're going to meet, and then he said he had a deal breaker. Then we weren't going to meet, but stayed friends. Then he wanted to meet now. We are back at not meeting. I'm tired of it. What was this deal breaker, I wonder? Hello, Ghislaine. Uh Thank you for being him. Said it's too bad we couldn't meet. I think the three-month rule bothers. Ah, was that the deal breaker? Was the three-month no kissing rule? And he told me not to text him if it changes. To text him if it changes. <laughs> High five. High five. Listen, selfish short-term thinkers don't want you to have standards. You know, that's what it comes down to. But he still texts, right? So the, why is he still texting? So you said, I don't want to kiss for three months. He said, that's a deal breaker. And then he said, if you change your mind, let me know, which means that I want what I want when I want it, which is selfish short-term thinking, right? It's not what's important to you. It's what's important to him. Uh, so why is he still texting? I actually answered that specific question in a blog post recently which is a girl who, again, she had standards and he said, you know, no, like I'm not, I'm not into this, but he's still hanging around. And basically what they're doing is they're testing your resolve, right? So selfish short-term thinkers, you know, sometimes like the guys who are really persistent in, in trying to get what they want, they want to see, is she putting her money where her mouth is? Because there are people out there, whether it's a guy or it's a girl, male or female, you know, many people say, I want to take it slow, right? Because they've been burned in past relationships. I want to take it slow. I don't want to rush too fast. That's what they say. And then they're kissing on the second date. They're having sex on the third, right? And so guys are familiar with this pattern and they want to see if you're going to continue having that pattern too, which is why they're being what I call a periphery male. So hanging around to see if at some point you break down and go, okay, I'll take you. Uh, so here's what I would advise you to do about these kinds of periphery males. Shut it down. Shut it down because when you say I have a standard, I, I'm going to keep that standard. I want to make sure the next one I kiss is the right one. The universe says, are you sure? And it's going to send tests your way. Whatever it is that your resolve is, like, like I resolve to quit smoking. The universe goes, let me give you something super stressful to deal with, right? Um, and so when you want to change something, the universe is going to throw things your way to see if you actually do. And so get rid of the periphery males and that way you can communicate to the universe. I am sure that who I want by my side is somebody who's going to support me and, and be devoted to me and is going to respect my wants and my needs. And when I say I don't kiss for three months, he's not going to say that's a deal breaker, but let me know if you change your mind because I want your booty and not your mind. So get rid of the periphery males. They are just testing your resolve and they are there only for your moment of weakness. Tell the universe you are not going to have a moment of weakness and you are certainly waiting for the right one and holding space for that. Uh, three month real bothers. Okay, talked on the phone. Hi, Sherry Ann. Hello, lovely. Um, oh, the breaker was I smoke sometimes. Says I'm impatient if things don't happen during my timeline. So, remember, um, that saying when somebody tells you who they are, believe them, right? So, if he says I'm impatient, do you want to be with an impatient person? If you don't want to, then walk away. Um, Carolyn, I was seeing a guy and he was well aware of my three-month rule. I love you ladies. I love you. Um, but figured it was open to sexting being as there is no contact, a little creepy. Yes, that's a little creepy. Um, but here's the thing about males, right? So mother nature designed them to plant that seed to go, go, go. And so again, with the testing, right? So, okay, well, no kissing, but can you give me a blowjob, right? Like I've heard that this is not unknown for guys to say, okay, well, maybe if we can't kiss, we can still do oral sex. And, and so they want to find out what your boundaries are. And the only way they're going to find out is by asking the question. So I do not demonize males for asking the question. At least they're asking and not assuming and not just going for it. Men who ask questions are men who want to be respectful. So thank you for the men who are asking, is sexting okay? That's a, you know, it's, 
uh, yeah, it seems a little creepy, right? You know, for us, for women, like, okay, I don't want to kiss you, but you want to picture my boobies. Like, does that make sense to you? That's what we say to ourselves. I get that you want to understand what the boundaries are. Um, so, Car you know, women, Caroline, all of you, all of you women, you will face us, just lay the boundaries out. Let them know. No, no kissing means no kissing and nothing sexual beyond kissing, but we can be affectionate. No kissing doesn't mean no touching, which means that we can hold hands like and, and tell them if I want to, right? If I want to let them know with that simple statement, the power lies in you to choose. And that's what you want them to understand is I am going to choose the right partner for myself. And I have a way in which I'm going to do that. And no kissing doesn't mean no touching. You know, if I want it to be affectionate, then that is something that we can do. Stephanie, he said he doesn't think he can make me happy or can develop a relationship during my lifetime. <laughs> Goodbye, my darling, block, done. Do not waste another minute with this person, please. Um, yeah, I said no thanks, good girl. He said, yes, he is a test. That's why I thanked him yesterday. Deal breaker as I smoke, but he is not happy. Here's the thing, it, you know, it's it smoking, but what else would it have been, right? From what he's saying, you are averting a train wreck with this one, or they want pics, that's my deal breaker. Yep, you know, by all means. If, if a man, you know, and this is what No Kissing for Three Months does, is it, is it tells a man, if you are going to get me sexually, it's because you have earned that part of me, that part, because there's more than one part of ourselves, right? And there are guys out there who are only interested in the one part. But, you know, you're making it clear that in order to get to that part, you need to get to this part. And the ones who are uninterested in getting into this part and earning this part so they can get that part are the ones that are going to walk out of your life when you have a no kissing for three months rule. And here's the thing. You don't want to fall for somebody that you're not compatible with. That's where the heartbreak comes from. That's where you start saying, oh, he's such an asshole. Yeah, you fell for somebody that you were compatible with, but he wasn't interested in being in a relationship with you. So no more assholes means no more being upset because now you're letting these guys just walk away and they don't ruffle your feathers. Uh, I asked my guy if he wants to be with the first person to send him pics or have sex. Or does he want to get to know me, right? Right? Um, so what else, guys? What else are we going to talk about? What else do we want to know about texting? Uh, you know, it's, it's actually really sweet. A little while ago, I had a male, I'm not going to call him a guy, but from what I can see, this is a man, but a young man. And I love, love, love how my reach is really getting out there. And I had a young man reach out, and he said, there was this girl, and, and we were texting. And then she sort of fell off, you know, how do I get her back? What do I, what do I do? What do I need to say? And so I actually, I, I oh, hey, JC, how are you? Uh, I actually got some information about her. I went and I creeped her out a little bit on Instagram and on Facebook. I got an idea what her interests were. And I helped him craft a text message that was very sensitive to who she was as a human being, really told her that he saw her, you know, not just surface her, not just what he was attracted to, but what was good about her. He saw the goodness in her. He saw her passion. He saw her interests. And I had him create a short but sweet text that touched on those and then ended with, you know, a statement of his interest in hoping to see her again. And he didn't hear back from her for several months, but uh, but then she did she did reach out to him like about a month ago, and started the conversation up again. So here's the thing with 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 good people, right? You, you have to have like some time allowance too. Like we are very easily to you know, we, we easily jump to conclusions about people and we're easy to anger and we're easy to dismiss. Um, but if there is somebody in front of you that seems like a decent person and they fall off and then they come back, I want you to understand that sometimes life happens to people. So maybe they fell off because 
they had kids and they tried for a moment to make it work again with their ex. And so they weren't communicating with other people and that's worthy, right? Like you wouldn't want, if you, if you had tried again with your ex for the sake of your children, would you want him texting other people? No, you wouldn't. So you don't know, maybe somebody passed away and they went into a depression and they had to recover from that and they, they didn't want to communicate with other people while they were going through a downtime in their life. And so in essence, they were holding back from vomiting negative feelings, maybe making somebody the scapegoat of negative feelings. Maybe they went into therapy to try and get over childhood trauma before getting into their next relationship. And when they were done all this, guess who popped into their mind? You did. And so they reached out and texted you to see if you were still around. So don't be so fast to dismiss people because you just don't know. And I would say, and I've had this happen, I had to be dating event and, and one of the women called me over and she said, you know, that guy, is, we were texting for a while and then he ghosted me and I, I, don't, I don't know what to do. And I said, listen, when he gets in front of you, ask him this super simple question, what changed? If he's showing interest after a space of time of not being around, the question is, what changed? Give them an opportunity to explain themselves and to see if maybe it's, it was a worthy reason for them to have dropped off like that. Um, Nina says, will I make when texting? If I give you my number, I expect to speak on the phone and to meet as soon as possible. Very worthy. If not, don't bother me. If I go on a date and he's just looking for a flinger when I stand, I pay for my own dinner, leave, and tell him good luck. I let them pay. <laughs> Why should you pay for the opportunity to find out that he wasn't meeting up with the same intent you were? Um, and I mean, here's the thing, Nina. I would imagine that before meeting for a date, you, you would have maybe established that you were meeting up for the, the same reason. Now, I know that I do say, and I'm, maybe I'm contradicting myself right now, but I know that I say like on your first date, state your intent. And, and the way that you do that is, you know, hey, like I've had my fun and now I'm looking for a long-term relationship. I'm not saying it's you, don't freak out. I'm just saying that's where I'm going towards and I'm dating towards finding that person who's gonna stand beside me and, and cover these life goals with me and, and list a couple off. Do you wanna buy a house? Do you wanna have children? Just, just a few, don't overwhelm. And, and then you say, what about you? And you give them an opportunity to state what their intent is too. But before meeting in person, um, before taking it from text to chat, I would highly recommend you know, stating your intent. So maybe when you meet on a first date, you reiterate your intent and then you get that face-to-face -face. because I love reading people's expressions. But before getting on a first date, if you are dating with the intent of starting a relationship, don't waste your time with people who are dating with the intent of finding a booty call. And so I'm sure if you're online, you have on your online status looking for a relationship and they responded to you, did you look at what they had for their online status? Did it say looking for a relationship or did it say looking for friendship or you know, seeing where it goes? Like, What are they actually saying? Because males for the most part, like 99% will be honest about the fact that they're not looking for a relationship when they are not. There are few males who will say actively looking for a relationship, want a partner by my side, and use that as a smokescreen for actually fooling you into getting into bed with them. Um, so yeah, just get, get their intent before taking that time to have that dinner, have that coffee. Say, by the way, I just wanna make sure, are you looking for a relationship? You know, have, have them confirm that at the outset. And then when you're sitting across from them, reiterate it, read their expressions, see how they approach it when you actually put it on the table in front of them. Because um, I think you're gonna A, stop wasting time, and then B, learn a lot too at the same time. Um, ben, uh, sorry, it's not Ben. Uh, um, oh, it's such a beautiful name. I keep saying this, starts with an S. Write your name out for us, lovely, because it really is a beautiful name. 
I don't enjoy texting. I don't mind it occasionally. I find everyone only wants to text. Um, careful with language, lovely, because when you become absolute in your language, that's a frequency you're putting out in the universe, and that's what you're getting back. So uh, if you say everyone only wants to text, just be really careful. Say the people I've met so far only want to text, and that way you're opening the doors for the universe to send you the people who are more in tune with what it is that you want, which is quickly going from messaging to having that face-to-face -face stuff, and then just using text message to like plan more dates and more face-to-face -face conversations. Um, Stephanie, my guy says, I jumped to conclusions too fast, fell off for a bit, I'm not allowing for a relationship to develop naturally. Is this the same one who said all those other things that I said are red flags and you should walk away? Here's the thing about um, what we call, uh, oh, what's the word? Um, guys who go out and, and troll for sex, uh, pick up artists. Pick up artists, guys, pay attention. Okay, because one of the things that a pickup artist does, and in case you don't know, a pickup artist makes it his mission to find women to have sex with. They go to the club and it's like jaws, do do, do do, dun 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 dun, and they're looking for the one who's going to come home with them tonight. One of the tactics that they use, one of the ways that they get women to come home, and listen, they're looking for women who are insecure. And so if they can incite some insecurity, because when you feel insecure, think about if, if you're standing at, at the edge of a fall and you feel insecure about falling, are you looking for something to hold on to, right? So insecurity makes you reach out and hold on to something. And a pickup artist looks for girls who seem insecure and they will add to that insecurity by putting her down. So Stephanie, pay attention to this. He says you come to conclusions too fast. You're not allowing things to develop naturally. He's got to go. He is doing all the tricks in the book to try and reel you in by using dirty tactics. And you need to shut him down because you need to tell the universe that you are done with guys like that. And the space beside you, your energetic space is only open for generous long-term thinkers who respect you, who would not put you down, and who are on board with your goals and your desires. Uh, Nina says, I've established what I'm looking for before I meet them. Have been lied to in the past, which sucks, but at least I find out through body language and through their words. Yes. So, but don't pay for dinner, darling, because if he lied to get you in front of him, let him pay for that meal. Let him pay for that meal. It's not, in my opinion, it's not fair that you pay to go out with somebody who lied to you. Ah, Justin. Hey. Uh, always look before chat. Um, told them to go find someone else. It's not working. I'm tired of the crap. So Stephanie, delete, block, block. Don't give him access to you. Don't let him come pinging at your door. Not cool. Not okay. Uh, Jody, nice to see you. Jody, I hope you're using my no kissing for three months rule. I'm not sure if you did though. Um, what else, guys? What do you want to know? What do we want to know about? texting um what do you what do you want to know to respond to somebody uh what do you is there a script you want me to give you about something uh do you want to know what to say to somebody to get that face-to-face -face meeting which which would be really super sweet super simple um, and again, you guys, uh, if you've been following me at all, you know that I propose a walking date instead of a coffee date when you get that face-to-face. -face. Um, but here's how you get them in front of you as soon as possible, moving from texting to that face-to-face. -face. So you have a little bit of back and forth, and then you know, you're establishing that there's a little bit of chemistry between you or some interest, maybe some intent. And that is when you say, hey, let's FaceTime. Let's do a video chat. And if they're like, uh, no, I can't, you know, I don't know how, I'm low tech. And there are some people like that. You have to forgive that. Some people are very insecure about technology. Um, I, I, let me tell you guys, about a year ago, my husband had me come in and help him change the font 
on his computer. And there was something else that he did recently that was just super low tech, but he'd never done before. Um, so my husband is super, super low tech. So, and there are some people out there. So if you say let's FaceTime and they say, no, uh, I can't for whatever reason say, okay, let's go for a walk. And obviously you want to meet somewhere very public. I don't want you to go, you know, for a walk in the forest with somebody you've never met before. I do want you to be safe. But the reason why I like the, the walk instead of the face to face is because it puts the good men at ease. Now, the guys, the trollers, they're used to that face-to-face. -face. They do it over and over and over again because they're online constantly trolling for women to meet up because they're hoping to get them into bed. But the good men are super selective. They don't get out that much. And they're probably tired of the interview. So if you say to them, let's go for a walk, let's meet somewhere and go for a walk, you're going to ping something in their brain that says, oh, this is different. This is not the same thing I'm used to. And, and put them at ease probably right away because if they're afraid of the interview process because they hate it, then you're saying something that automatically makes them feel more comfortable. And because you're not sitting face to face and interviewing each other, you're side by side, which means you're not always looking into each other's face. You can have comfortable silences where you think about the next thing to say. So get that face-to-face -face meeting, but try to make it a walk just to make it something different and sweeter and more comfortable. Um, okay. Uh, what about the winter, not walking in the winter? No. So you know what you can do? You can meet at the mall. Why not? Why not walk around the mall? And especially in December, when malls will have displays and the windows will have their, their Christmas decorations up, you could say, um, hey, let's go to the mall and let's just walk around and look at the Christmas displays, right? Um, and there are museums. Uh, Hamilton, I think, has a beautiful, beautiful art gallery. Kitchener has art galleries. There's the Clay Museum right here. There are some indoor spaces that are interesting to look at, interesting to explore, cheap to get into. Guys, hit them up, take advantage of them. Uh, now, yeah, it sucks to walk around in winter, but sometimes it's nice to walk around in winter. They're, they're doing really cute little things on King Street, downtown King Street. You can you can take a walk up King Street. It doesn't have to be a long walk, right? Say, so let's meet up for a walk and let's just, you know, take a walk up and down King Street. And, and that's just a walk down King Street, walk up King Street in the market. See where there's things to look at. Uh, go to the market, right? Make, do it on a Saturday. And, and go to the farmer's market. That's always a nice thing to do. But find somewhere to go explore together. You know, again, something that gives you things to look at so that you're not always preoccupied with each other. And it sparks conversation that's outside of the norm. Um, and you get to delve into each other a little bit better. Uh, what else? Give me some questions, guys. I love questions. I love, 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 love when you, when you talk to me. Um, I love that Justin is joined. I don't know if he's still here or not, but Justin is a, a good, good friend of mine. He's actually in one of my videos uh, where I talked to three men about no kissing for three months. And this was a long time ago. He is still with that woman that he talked about then. Uh, so he enjoyed almost a full three months of no kissing. They are doing great things together. They're both seeing a life coach to uh, you know make sure that they're leaning into the relationship properly, which I highly commend. It's amazing. Mark is also somebody uh, who was at that conversation, the three men talking about no kissing for three months. And uh, shortly after that, Mark met somebody. Again, they got to very close to the three month mark. They knew each other so well before having that first kiss. It's such a romantic first kiss. They have been together for nine, close to 10 months now. They don't fight, they get along so well. And, and it really solidifies getting into a great relationship because you know what to expect going in. And it just, it makes it so much easier to come into something that is loving and devoted and solid and supportive. Uh, I have a great personality, but very direct. Hey, you and I. My soft skills are poor, it seems, when it comes to texting. I think I come off abrupt. 
How do I keep my light spirit but remain true to my directness? Emojis, <laughs> right? Because I am also very, like, when I text people, I don't even say hi. Like, I have a question, I have, I have an invitation, I have something on my mind. There's a reason why I picked up my phone to start texting and I get right to it. And, and I find too, like I wonder, oh my God, like I should maybe say hello, how are you first, right? And so I, I kind of catch myself sometimes going, oh, maybe I'm too direct. So I tend to sprinkle my text messages with emojis, the smiley face emoji, right? Just put the smiley face emoji. I, I put it in almost every text just to make sure that even though the words are super direct, my spirit behind it is, is an open and friendly spirit. So use that smile emoji. Don't use the heart emoji because you don't want to lean them on. Men will read into the heart emoji, right? Men are, are looking for signs, right? And so be careful with the signs that you're putting out. So don't use the heart emoji until there's a heart reaction. How many people should you talk to at once online? One million. One million. There's no limit. Talk to as many people online as you want. This is why the no kissing for three months rule is your friend. I call it your insurance policy because it keeps you from rushing into the wrong relationship. And it also keeps you from narrowing your focus and eliminating other people when you're considering somebody. When you are in the consideration phase, which is when you're not kissing anybody, you are open to anybody gaining your interest. Listen, may the best man win, okay? So talk to as many people as you like when you are not kissing. Obviously, when you kiss, that is that is the sign of devotion that, you know, and, and it is to us. So men, you know, I know you, you feel differently about a kiss, and that's because phenyl ethylamine, the kiss, the chemical created during the kiss doesn't the brain in the same way. It doesn't tell you you've completed a vetting process and selected a mate the way it does for the female brain. And so the kiss for us women seals the deal. But until you've had that kiss, you can talk to anybody you want to talk to. So if you want to talk to a million guys, a million men, a million males, a million females, do it. When you seal the deal, that's it. Um, so <laughs> the emojis work well to soften things. Absolutely. Hi, Cheryl. Good to see you. Oh, my God. Cheryl was like, I hate it when men don't use good grammar. Um, I probably need to watch that episode every three months without kissing. Yes. Um, grab a copy of No More Assholes because this is going to help you with that vetting process. This will help you understand. I get into texting in that book as well um, and, and help you with like behaviors when it comes to texting. Uh, really, really help you understand how to use the no kissing for three months rule and help you find a compatible partner. And then if you go on YouTube, my videos online, if you, if you go to my dating smart uh, uh, video playlist, you're gonna find a lot of advice on there including the episode with the three men if you prefer podcasts by the way i have that up on my podcast too i just separated the audio from the video and i, I popped it up on the podcast um oh i love you too uh nobody got time for that many right but i'm just saying right there's no limit the only limit is what you impose upon yourself um how do you approach getting offline if dating someone how do you approach getting offline if dating someone? You're going to have to say that differently, um, right? So you hate emojis like pickle, pickle and smiley. Well, don't, don't pickle, but do the smiley. For sure, for sure. And don't send a peach emoji because that's just going to turn them on. Um, and, and maybe do some meditation. If you find that you're too judgmental and you're too quick to, to judge people, uh, I would suggest starting to meditate because it shrinks the part of your brain that because judgment tends to come from like fear, anxiety a little bit, like like it, it's, it's a tactic that we use to push people away. Um, so shrinking your amygdala through meditation is good, but meditation also increases your hippocampus, which is introspection and compassion. And these are fantastic tools 
for seeing ourselves and other human beings. So I super highly recommend you go to my YouTube channel, go to my Let's Meditate playlist, watch the two minute tutorial, and then start listening to the love frequency. And I mean, we're looking for relationships, right? So listen to the love frequency, start vibing that love frequency out of yourself. Use headphones because it's it's a special kind of music that will infuse a frequency into your body, but you need to use headphones in order for it to work. Um, Cheryl, hi Chantal, I'm here listening now, just got home, good to see you, lovely. Uh, guys always send these emojis. Guys are sending pickles? Mm. I'm not in for that, eggplants. <laughs> I'm not in for pickles and eggplants. So basically what these ones are doing are they're trolling for sex. Listen, a man, a generous long-term thinker with the intent of finding a relationship is not sending pickle or eggplant emojis. He's not, he wants to know who you are. Men are very eager to use the no kissing for three months rule. They love the no kissing for three months rule because they are looking for a good woman. They're looking for a generous long-term thinker. They know that rushing things is not how you figure out who a person is. They want to know who you are before blowing it up into something that might start to become dramatic. They know that sex complicates things. So when you are finally in front of a man and you say, by the way, I don't kiss for three months, here's the reason why, you will find a man will say that makes sense. And he he's not gonna send you pickles and eggplants. He's gonna, he's gonna be like, who are you? How can I figure you out? Um, let's, let's get together. Um, I wanna believe you, but I can't seem to meet these men. Well. Maybe you need some coaching because what I help you do is overcome mindset, right? Because sometimes our biggest obstacle is ourselves. And, and again, remember how I talked about frequency and like, and like what you're putting out is what you're receiving. And in order to have what you want, you need to believe you deserve it and believe that it's out there. And before I, I met the man who I am married to today. And frankly, there was two versions of this man and we were together for five and a half years. And then we broke up for a final time because we had broken up before because we just fought so much. We broke up and I went, okay, you know what? I'm getting over this. A, I'm getting over this. B, I'm getting my head on straight. C, I'm gonna redefine my next relationship. And that is what I said about doing No More Assholes is that journey really. And and so, you know, part of my, my, my defining myself was, uh, you know, coming to terms with the fact that I deserve something great because one thing that he would say is you won't find somebody better than me. And I, I ultimately just went, fuck you. You know what? I will. I will do better because I always do better because I'm too smart to go backwards is what I said to him. And so he left me one more time and I said, that's the last time for me. I, I did my 50 I am statements. I wrote at the top, I am awesome because that was the conclusion that I came to when I was done looking at this list of all my great qualities. And then I said, what do I want for my next relationship? And I defined that. And so I put myself in the mindset of A, understanding that I deserve something great and B, knowing what that was going to look like. So mindset is super important to achieving that relationship. And, and I want you to, to really feel the words that I'm saying right now and to hopefully tell yourself tonight, I'm going to start getting myself in the right mindset. And I'm, I'm gonna start monitoring this, this negativity that I have about what's out there. And I'm gonna start believing that there is something amazing. If you keep listening to me, I keep defining what these good men are like. I want you to start believing that they're out there because they so, so are. Um, good, 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 darling. Good. Uh, guys looking for quick sex and pickles and eggplant emojis. That's it, right? So they're sending out the bat signal, right? And the bat signal is, this is what I want to give you. I want to give you pickles and eggplants. Um, but you're looking for the one who wants to give you a heart, right? So again, watch those emojis and, and the ones who are sending you pickles and eggplants right off the bat, just go, bye guy. You're not for me. Uh, what else, what else, what else we got? Uh, my judgment I must be using the wrong apps. I know there are good men. Yay. I'm very happy to hear you say that there really, really are. Keep listening to me. I'm going to keep showing you what they look like. 
because if you can conceive it, you can achieve it. It is going to be such a beautiful, beautiful thing for you to step into. I'm, I'm loving your likes, you guys. Love, love, love. Hi, Craig. Oh, I, was, I wonder if that was Craig who was giving me those likes because he's like liking what I'm saying about men. So, Craig, um, let's talk about texting, Craig. We, I've been talking to the ladies. I'd love to hear from a man's perspective what is frustrating about texting. Let's get you into this conversation. My ladies love to hear what men have to say. So let's let's talk about this. And what else do you guys want to know? What else is bothering you? Um, oh, I, you know, I, I didn't quite finish my sentence when I said, how do you, what is it that you say uh, for, for getting somebody to go from texting to online? So again, you meet somebody online, you get some messaging going on, and, and you know, a don't wait too long, like no more than a week of messaging, and then here's what you say. Hey, I'd really love to meet you. Let's set up a time to get together. Short and sweet, right? Short and sweet and to the point. And the reason why I have you be short and sweet and to the point when you're talking to men is because women process about 20,000 words a day. Men process about five to 7,000 words a day. And it really is good for us to use less words to get our point across because if we use too many words with men, our message gets lost in the jumble of words. So men really do appreciate it when we can communicate on their level, which is using less words to be more concise, versus trying to pull them up to our level, which is using a lot of words to, um, to convey what it is that they want. Um, Sometimes our glasses are foggy, as talked about the negative goggles. It just takes a little grace and shifting to wait in a different pool, love. So Rebecca, um, her and I, we go on Instagram Live on Mondays at noon. So she comes over to my page, and we come on together. And the life coach in Grand Rapids, Michigan. So both of us answer people's questions on Instagram Mondays at noon. And then once a month, we also come on Facebook, and I have a special group called the No More Assholes Monthly Webinar, free webinar, by the way. And this is for you people who are just starting off into dating. You're curious about this no kissing for three months rule. You want to know why. You want to know how. So we, we and, and we also, both of us are in fantastic relationships. And this is part of the reason why we team together, because we want to show you what a great relationship looks like and assure you that they exist, teach you how to get into it. Um, so if you haven't signed up to that group, go and find it, it's under my groups, and go join that group. Our next one is on November 5th at 8 p.m., and we will be doing it live from that group. Uh, I'm always gonna be doing that particular Tuesday at 8 p.m. in that group because I don't wanna always be doing it on this page for the regular followers. Um, and I want to give it like a place, like a, like a little nook for the people who are starting out and just using, starting to use a three-month no kissing rule and pe people who want to come back and talk about how it, their experience has been, like just a really cute little place for people to discuss that. Um, Nina, I was so joined it based on your three-month rule, no kissing. Uh, that is what it can be based on. Uh, Carolyn, I have issues finding men. It's not... The bars and websites don't seem to be an option if you're looking for long term. Um, speed dating, that's why I do speed dating. Uh, so be sure to join my speed dating is easy with Chantal Hyde group. Again, go into my groups, you're gonna find it there. Uh, and But once a month now, I'm doing speed dating events. This month is sold out, it's gonna be on this Saturday. I'm already taking names for November. Now the one on November, I believe, it's going to be, let me just double check here for you guys, uh, November 16. Um, so if you wanna come speed dating on November 16, you can send me an e-transfer, uh, just uh, send me a message and let me know, I'll give you the information and the password. So if you have trouble finding men, then that's why I had these speed dating events to help you good people come find each other. Uh, I found this page because I'm repeating my mistakes. I love you. Thank you. 
Uh, I am I am the change maker. I'm the pattern changer. How did you hear about me, by the way? I'd love, love, love to hear that. Anybody, everybody, if you can tell me how you heard about me. Cheryl, I know how you, how you heard about me. Uh, I want to change my view. Rejection is unbearable, especially when I feel I gave someone undeserving a chance. For sure. Craig, what I'm frustrated with about women is that as we get older, it seems the women get harder with judgment. And as us men try to loosen up and get softer. I am working on that, by the way. That I am... That is my mission to help women understand good men and, and to not take all of this pain that they've carried with them from relationship to relationship. And every relationship does make us a little bit harder. So I am very much working on softening the women and getting them to, to A, understand there are good men out there and B, understand how to treat them so that they're not taking hurt into a good relationship and turning it into a bad relationship, but instead letting it develop into a fantastic relationship. Uh, deal with a lot of duplicity. Yes. Yes. There are, you know, there are selfish short-term thinkers that are male. There are selfish short-term thinkers that are female. Um, experience a lot of extremes with women's personalities. Uh, keep meeting my women, Craig. I, I, I got some good ones here. Um, any Christian men on here? That's a good question. If there's, if, if Craig is, maybe he can answer that. Um, and even in the speed dating, uh, Cheryl, in my speed dating group, you can post on there. And so feel free to ask if there are any Christian men in there and see if you get a reply. Um, even the awareness is a beautiful thing. It will take time because you'll get there a hundred percent, hundred percent. Aw, my, uh, my, my cousin is on here. Uh, you're welcome, Craig. We don't get harder. We get tired of the bull. Uh, we tend to see patterns, so we start acting on red flags earlier than when we were younger. Yes, yes. And, and we, we did talk about some of that tonight. You know, me saying when you start, when, when they're sending you pickles and eggplants, like shut it down because this is somebody trolling for sex. Um, but sometimes we are unnecessarily hard and we dismiss people too quickly. Again, this is why I say do the walking date instead of the interview date because selfish short term thinkers, guys who are trolling for sex, there's a lot of flash on the outside, right? They're very dynamic. They're good on that interview date. They have a lot of swag, a lot of confidence, and they're exuding it. They're putting it right out there. Generous long-term thinkers are also very confident, but they are more introverted. And whereas selfish short-term thinkers looking for sex are the splashing sparkle everywhere, generous long-term thinkers looking for relationships keep their sparkle inside because they are observing you. They are selective. They want to see how you behave over a certain period of time before deciding to show you the layers on the inside. And they are multi-layered. You will have to dig through to find that gem inside. I call them the diamond in the rough. But here's the thing about a diamond in the rough. Diamonds in the rough aren't sitting on top of the mound. You have to dig through the bullshit to get to them. And, and it's a process. And so when you go on a walking date, you make the process become more natural. And good men are better in a natural environment. And interviews are not a natural environment for them. And also, especially if they've been on the dating scene for a while, and it's, you know, once bit and twice shy. Now they're holding back a little bit too. They have some walls up. So have some, have some patience and, and don't be so quick to dismiss somebody. Don't look for that initial, like it has to be a spark. I have to sit across from them and have to feel something move inside of me. No, sit across, or don't sit across, go for a walk. And then ask yourself at the end of the walk, did I feel comfortable? Did I laugh? Did I enjoy this person's company? Did we have some things in common? Some things in common. And do I want to see them again? There is only one question to ask yourself on a first date. One, do I want to see them again? That's it. That's it. It is not more complicated than that. And just make it a nice, easy breezy date. Um, Craig, see, look at this. I understand. You really, yes, yeah, see? 
Yes, 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 I do, don't I? I see you, I see my men, I see my men, I see my men. I am teaching women how to see you too. Um, so great, 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 great. Guys, we are almost hitting an hour. I'm going to give this another five minutes. What else do you want to say? What else do you want to dissect? What else do you want to get into? What else do you want to understand? Um, what else do you want to know? Ben, Ben, uh, I mean, Craig, I mean, Craig, uh, did I miss anything? Is there something I haven't said about good men that women should know? Tell us about that. Teach us a little something about good men. Um, or Justin, or um, my cousin Raymond. Oh my God. Um, my cousin Raymond is, is, you know, like, like I, I am surrounded by great, great, great men. Um, you know, I wrote a book called Custom Made, and it, it's about tapping into what it is that you were born to do. This is your purpose. This is what you are on this planet to fulfill. And if somebody were to ask me, what is the meaning of life? I would say the answer is to have meaning in your life. And part of having a meaningful life is understanding what your purpose is. And I, and the universe will help you. It will surround you with clues to your purpose. And the universe has surrounded me with some fantastic, amazing, incredible men so that me with my sociologist, my social scientist mind could study them and understand them and then be able to teach you what the signs are that there's a good man in front of you. Uh, you don't have enough time. <laughs> All, right. All right then. Um, that's cute. You know, I thought that uh, when it comes to women, there's like a joke, right? Like the book to understanding women and this, you know, the book is like <laughs> super tall. Um, I wonder how tall the book would be if it was a book on understanding men. Uh, I, you know, it's funny because like my husband, he's my muse. He's hilarious. I love him to death. Um, and I said to him, okay, so baby, let me get this straight. So, so the key to having a great relationship with a good man is, um, feed him. Don't say no to sex. And, and you know, guys, I, I don't mean don't have sex when you don't want to. Certainly I have said no to my husband when it's a hard no, but part of of my generosity with my husband is 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 just giving him what he needs right and and he he would do the exact same thing for me like there have been times when I've called my husband at work and I said baby I need you and he's like I'm coming over and doesn't matter how busy he is doesn't matter how tired he is when when I need him he's there for me so when he needs me I'm there for him so feed him don't say no to sex and I say that tongue-in-cheek um, and don't complain. So Craig, what do you think? Three rules, feed him, give him what he needs, don't complain, did I nail it? Is there is there another rule that I missed here? Uh, so Cheryl says, I like this man. He respectfully said he wanted to just be friends. I told him not to call me anymore. I really miss him now. That was on July 10th. Any advice? So how, right, yes. How do you pick up again? If you've said no to somebody, but now you're missing him and, and you'd like to, to see. So I would say, um, said he wanted to just be friends. Okay, so here's the thing, Cheryl. He says he just wanted to be friends. And, and so the question that comes up in my mind is, are you setting yourself up for hurt if you invite him back into your life and it is the same answer and i'm wondering how you left it hi amanda deborah good to see you ladies i'm wondering how you left it did you say to him okay goodbye and that's it or did you say if you change your mind let me know so was the door open for him to step through or does he feel like that door is shut because that changes what you would say if you reach out to him again and i want you to think this over carefully that if he's still in that same frame of mind that he just wants to be friends are you okay with that will you sacrifice yourself and hope to change his mind what's going to go on here this this is something that would need to be sort of peeled back a little bit more before i can just give an answer um 
say, oh yeah, I want a serious relationship, but then we said he only wants to be good friends. How do I get around that? You can't. So here's the thing, and this is why I say state your intent at the beginning, and especially do it when you're face-to-face -face so you can read body language and reactions. When you say you want a relationship and he says he doesn't, I, I tell people, look, men know before they're across from you what they're there for. If they're there for a booty call, a friendship, or if they're looking for a relationship from you. And if he has told you already that he only wants to be friends, don't try to change that with him. Change who you're interested in by widening your circle once again reaching out, finding new people, and finding that person that you feel the same way you feel towards him, but with somebody who's looking at you the same way you're looking at them, which is with interest and intent to pursue. So don't pursue somebody who has made it clear he's not interested in being pursued because you are setting yourself up for some hurt emotions. Hi, Deborah. Uh, I said goodbye, shut the door. Good. Leave it at that. Um, leave it at that. You said, I want a serious relationship. You said he only wants to be good friends. Take him at his, at his word. I say this so often, ladies, be a word nerd when it comes to males. Believe the words that are coming out of their mouths. There's a blog post that I wrote that says, um, he says he doesn't want a relationship, but he's perfect. So see if you can find that on my blog. It is all about that and all about the reasons why. And, and how you would play a waiting game that you might lose if you try to change his mind. And I don't want to see you do that. I want to see you find somebody who is really ready, as ready for you as you are ready for them. Um, don't a lot of relationships start off as friends. So, you know, for me, yeah, like that's what the no kissing for three months rule, but it's, it's, it's the intent of, of looking for a relationship using this rule, right? Um, and if he's already said, I just want to be friends, it's because there's a part of his brain that has already told him, this is not the one for me. And that's why I'm advising you to move on because he sounds like he's already made that decision. And it doesn't, it doesn't sound like it's wishy-washy. So I would rather see you look for someone new. Uh, don't you think men change their minds? What if they're scared because of the hurt they experience? So if he does change his mind and he can't get you off of his mind, he will reach out. Believe me, when a man is interested in a woman and males back me up on this, if a man, man, is interested in a woman, there is no obstacle. He will not be afraid to reach out. Now, did you shut the door in a rude way or did you shut it in a polite way, right? Like if you said, you know what, fuck you, I'm tired of guys that are just using people, like was it, you know, like like how did you shut that door? Um, if it was If it was polite, if it was respectful, it was like, thank you, no thank you, I'm looking for a relationship. If he wants a relationship with you, if he wants to pursue that, if he wants to see if there's potential for a relationship, he will reach out. So yes, men can change their minds. Give them space to change their minds. Um, I say if you can just be friends with them but at the same time date others, I say go for it and be friends. Uh, yeah, but here's the thing though. She has feelings for him, Stephanie. And when we have feelings for someone, it's hard for us to shift our focus. And so there will be, you know, the blinders are going to be on. And I don't want her to do that. I don't want her to invite somebody in who doesn't want to get in a relationship and then not see the people who might start being periphery males who do want a relationship. Uh, that's how I feel like, too. I miss him, but he's made it clear. I would be setting myself up for failure, right? Yeah, see, Ben, no, right? Craig, thumbs up, yeah, got you. Okay, all right, my loves, all right. Uh, I said 10 minutes ago I was going to log off. 
Uh, this was so much fun, so much fun. Uh, don't know what we're going to talk about next week. I will come up with another incredible topic, and we will dissect it. As usual, Tuesdays, 8 p.m., come find me here. So next Tuesday is going to be October 22nd. Uh, I love you. Love you. Love, love, love you guys. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for making this fun. Thank you for being a part of everything that I create. Uh, Cheryl, very polite way. Seen this house party two months ago, but did not even look at him. There you go. There you go. Um, so, so much love for you. I'm going to log off now. And as usual, my loves, I will talk to you soon.